Matt, I am so glad that you are with us today. As I said, his, his bio is on the insert, and you heard some of his activities during the Word for All Ages. I know you'll want to greet both Matt and Mary at fellowship hour after church this morning, but Matt, will you share with us today? Congregational United Church of Christ in North Ridgeville is their, their church. Good morning. Good morning. Elmore, you can do better than that. <laughs> let's try this again. But let's do it joyfully. Okay? So I'm going to sign to you how we say good morning. Good morning. You try. Good morning. Oh, thank you. I am so excited to be here with you in person and online to be able to worship with you today. Before we start, I want to thank my mom for driving me to be with you today and helping me with the sermon. My wife for practicing and listening to me. My many therapists and doctors on this 10 year road and for getting me to this point. And finally, Reverend Margaret Mills, who has had such a positive impact on my life for giving me the chance to share with you the infinite possibilities of joy when life throws you a curveball. Let's start with who I am. My name is Matthew Karlovec, though I go by different names to different people. I go by Matthew, Matt, Mr. K, Coach K, and Uncle Matt. But even though they are different names, did you know that Matthew means gift from God? I was blessed with this name thanks to my dad having a dream to name me this one night. This name I feel started as a launching point to deepening my faith journey even before any of us knew it. So let's start with my story. I was 27 in my first year of teaching a brand new type of co-ed classroom with an amazing special needs teacher named Aileen. But my focus was on spending most of my day with three autistic children pushing in 
to a regular ed kindergarten class at Vincent Elementary School in Clearview District. I was in my second year of getting the opportunity to coach high school baseball at my home school, Elyria High School, where I had the chance to play high school baseball. It was a dream all coming true. I had an amazing girlfriend of three years, who is also a teacher. And we were doing a long distance relationship. She was in the bubble, which is what I call Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> teaching in the Hilliard District as a special needs teacher. And I was back living with my parents in good old Illyria. You see, in my life was so beautiful. It was all planned out with infinite possibilities. But then life threw me a curveball as I got encephalitis on February 7th of 2013, or what I call E. According to E411, a group that my family has a connection to, they can explain it in a better way than I can. E is a swelling of the brain. It can strike anyone, anywhere, at any time. And at any age, resulting in a serious and sometimes life threatening emergency. Each year, about 20,000 Americans get it, and 20% of those cases are fatal. Those who survive are left with an acquired brain injury. There are three big kinds of E. What I have is caused by a non-specific virus that attacked my brain. It is the tricky E to diagnose, and I am lucky to be alive because I should have been in that 20%. I had to be brought back to life four times that first night. My temperature was 107 degrees, and I was constantly seizuring and on a vent and in a deep coma. I know that God was watching over me that night because it was just my luck that the new 
ER doctor in our local hospital did her training at John Hopkins University. One of the very few hospitals in the nation doing research on E. She diagnosed it right away and called for the life flight to Cleveland. She knew they only had a small window of time to get a special medicine in me and try and save me. But it had to be done by a special doctor. It was a very icy winter night and all the flights were canceled. So the doctor and team had to come by a very special rescue squad from University Hospital. I did not know what was happening, but my mom said, everyone in the ER was doing everything they could to keep me alive. What should have been a 30 minute drive took almost two hours. Once getting to the hospital, the UH doctor took over and gave me the medicine. They knew the only chance I had to survive was to get me back to UH. Again, what a 30 minute drive should happen, this time took an hour to get back. My mom and dad could not go with me, so I was in the hands of a doctor and two trauma nurses. But little did I know that waiting for me on the other end was my best friend since I was three. He was working at UH that day and literally lied his way into the ICU. <laughs> so he was there waiting for me when I arrived. He was with me through what he said were some very scary moments until my parents were allowed in. I truly believe that God and my angels were there with me that day. Once out of the hospital, I spent the next six months in two different rehab centers. For me, these were very scary days. I had no idea what was going on. But my mom and Kathleen were there, almost around the clock, to keep me calm and feel safe. So that's how this journey, looking for joy, all began. As I prepared for what I wanted to share with you today, the infinite possibilities of joy, I came across an article by the Reverend Sherry Nelson of Minnesota's conference in the UCC. She talks about Psalm 98 in the book of Psalms in, Revelation, in relation to Advent. In verse four of Psalm, she says it is a reminder for us to continue to make a joyful noise and for all the earth to sing praises 
of joy. Unfortunately, we often spend much of our energy in lament as we emphasize the world's misfortunes rather than speaking joyfully of our accomplishments. No matter the size, we need to sing of joy, peace, and love. As things we have right now seem contradictory to the social normalization of fear, despair, and loathing. She then goes on to say, but maybe in the midst of that, we're missing that there is something important in the lives of this Advent season. So I want you to take a moment to ask yourself, no matter the size, think of a moment in your life that has brought you the possibilities of joy. Now can three people share with me their joy? Anybody have a joy? Children that care. Their kids, too. And the kids. Being here at church today. Yes, that is a great one. Thank you all for sharing. And I would like to share with you what I have learned about the possibilities of infinite joy. There are two movies that I use to explain my life today. The first is Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray, who plays Phil Connors, a cynical news weatherman. Along with his news team, he goes about reporting on the annual event of Pugsatawney Phil and whether he will see that shadow for six more weeks of winter or not on February 2nd. When Phil goes to bed that night, he expects to wake up on February 3rd. Instead, he wakes up and finds it's the same date again. Every day. But it's not always the same day. Things change each day for Phil. But for him, he, relieves, he relives the same date. So it's the same date, but it's a different day. The second movie is called 50 First Dates and stars Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler. It follows around the character Lucy, who has a brain injury, and a guy named Henry, who at first just really wants to get to know her. But then he falls in love with her by going on 50 first dates with her. With each date, Lucy has no memories of that date or Henry. But Henry keeps having to reintroduce, reintroduce himself and win her over again and again. So at the end of the movie, Lucy and Henry are married. 
But Lucy has no memory of the events that happened. So with the help of her family, Henry makes a movie sharing all the infinite possibilities of joy that they have experienced. You see, both movies kind of describe my life in a nutshell. Due to E and my brain injury, I have lost all of my small-term memory. My long-term memory before E is great. I'm so thankful for that. I don't always remember the day before, but I do know I'm not living the same day over and over and over again. At least I think I'm not. <laughs> Just like in both movies, I have had to learn to adapt. My family, friends, and therapists have had to come up with tools for even the smallest things. Each day, I have to remind, be reminded of what happened the day before, just like Lucy, though not in a video form. Through pictures, notes on my iPad, and verbal cues from everyone around me, I am reminded about what happened that day before. I also have a very detailed calendar to learn and remind me of what my schedule is. Each year on my birthday, I am shocked when my family tells me how old I am. You see, I got sick when I was 27. And I always think now that I'm going to be turning 28. So my question always is, did I miss anything? <laughs> Out comes my iPads, laptops, and albums to show me all the infinite possibilities of joy I experienced that year. Since I got E, if you asked to tell you my best memories, I would have no clue. But I could show you lots and lots of pictures and written stories that show a life filled with joy and love. The joys in life come from being alive. I'm still mad just Matt 2.0, which I also celebrate on February 7th each year because that is the day I celebrate that God gave me life again. Over the last almost 10 years, Team Matt, which is made up of my family, friends, and medical teams, has supported me. They have helped me in working towards achieve my five goals. In no order are working hard to get better, teaching kindergarten, marrying Kathleen, coaching baseball, and driving a car. These five goals that many thought were impossible to achieve have brought infinite possibilities of joy. By working hard with my therapy team to get better, I have experienced many gains and setbacks. But each step forward has brought me joy. Because I know I can do things now that many thought were impossible. Through this process, I have been able to relearn how to walk, talk, eat, swallow, smile, stand without falling, move my arm, learn to read and write. 
and so many more. Mary and Kathleen has brought me so many joys. She met me before E and has stood by my side the last 10 years. Being able to ask her to marry me by kneeling should have been impossible, but my therapy team worked six months putting together a step-by-step -step plan to make it happen. The joy in her teary eyes that day that I saw in pictures brought me more joy than you can imagine. Our wedding, three years later, brought so many infinite possibilities of joy. The video of us actually dancing our first dance I had practiced with my team for a year brings me big joy. I even surprised my mom and danced with her that night. I know that both dances not only brought me joy, but also joy for everyone who was there. Mm -hmm. Kathleen's faith that I would continue to get better made our love for each other continue to grow and get stronger. And the infinite, infinite possibilities of joy have been endless. Trust me, the pictures don't lie. Coaching baseball has always brought me joy. I know coaching again has its challenges. Being in a wheelchair, most people look at you differently. They think you do not have the skills or what it takes to coach again. My long-term memory of coaching is still with me. As recently, I got my certification from the NHFS coaching level one certificate. It only took me a year. But this means I have passed all the necessary skills above and beyond what the state of Ohio requires to coach again. The infinite possibilities of joy that I have had to be able to just apply gives me the confidence of future possibilities. Scott, a friend who coaches high school football, has asked me to be on his staff next year. He knows my joy of coaching and wants to support me in making that happen. I know my goals of teaching kindergarten again and driving a car are down the road but being able to keep my driver's license renewed gives me the hope and faith that maybe someday I can do it. But I can st still help even if I can't drive. I'm very good at directions. <laughs> and I have helped many times my mom and Kathleen from getting lost. This is a little thing, but a great joy of my life. Finally, teaching kindergarten. I know that this will be the hardest to prove that I can do again. But one thing I have learned about teaching kindergarten, or any grade for that matter, is you don't have to be in the classroom to do it. Imagine the joys just like today in your Sunday school who listen to many faith stories, or the neighborhood kids who knock on your door asking if you can play school with them. That joy is priceless. You see, I believe God gave me joy by putting me in that kindergarten classroom in Clearview so many years ago. In working with those students and having to brush up on my sign language skills, it gave me the ability to communicate with doctors and nurses when I first woke up from my coma in that hospital. My mom said they could not believe I could sign with them, nor do much else. The Reverend Sherry Nelson said it takes so much more energy to lament than find joy. Did you know that it takes more energy to frown 
than it does to smile? I have a couple of sayings that I want to leave you with that I came up with along these nine and a half years going on ten that I feel have helped make people turn knots, I believe, into cans. The first is focus on the little things I can do, not on the things I can't do. The second is just don't say can't. You see, it's easier on my brain and body to focus and put joys and goods and happy things first. Crying is just a little bit okay too. But stinking thinking does not help at all. It makes it harder and harder to get what I need to get done. Having a team of love and compassionate and understanding people in your life is very important. And remember this. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. As God will give us nothing that we find impossible. For I believe that each day we are given is living with the joy of a new day. Find those infi infinite possibilities of joy even when life throws you a curveball. So go out St. John's UCC and make that joyful noise and tell them that Matt sent you. Mm-hmm.